So I've always been a pretty big fan of Kirby. <laughs> For as far back as I can remember, I've always liked him. And just look at him. Look at his character design. What's not to love? He's shaped like a friend. I always choose Kirby as my main in Smash. Every handheld Nintendo device I've had, I've had some kind of Kirby game for. Kirby is my profile pick on my Nintendo Switch. I've been eyeing the Kirby amiibo for a little bit of time, thinking about getting him. He's currently sold out on the Nintendo website, so I um, might have to go to eBay or some third-party sellers to try and find him if I want him soon. I used to rent the DVDs of Kirby Right Back At Ya from the family video by my house growing up. My most recent Kirby purchase is a patch for um, this black rucksack that I use. I like to put patches on backpacks. This is, I think, the second or third bag I've owned that I've done that to. Um, I think they're fun. I really like patches. It's probably because I was a Girl Scout for 13 years. I also collect pins, um, just in general. I sometimes put them on backpacks and jackets. I haven't found a Kirby pin that I'm in love with, though, so I don't have a Kirby pin. I've never been big into keychains as far as backpack decorations. I do pretty consistently have a hand sanitizer keychain, some kind of chapstick keychain, and a bandana on my backpack. Um, just across the board, those three I usually pretty consistently have. I've never even really been big on keychains for my keys. These are my keys from high school um, for my car, and as you can see, they're, they're pretty bare. I've got a house key, I've got some brass knuckles, I've got a little Eiffel Tower that my cousins, I believe, sent me on a trip, or maybe my grandma. Um, and then I have this dog that I got out of a cereal box because I thought he looked like my dog, so I put him on my keys. And I've always wanted to like keychains. I think they're fun. I have a few plush keychains um, that I've acquired over the years. I have this little camel that my cousins sent me a few years back when they were visiting family in Morocco. I have this little sea turtle that I got on a Girl Scout trip to Costa Rica when I was in middle school. And most recently, I have this little lizard because I saw him at the aquarium in Oklahoma over a year ago um, when I went and I saw him and I was like, I have to have him. So I really want to like plush keychains. I think they're really cute, but I'm always afraid they're going to get gross and dirty. So I don't really put them on bags. Recently, I was at the craft store um, because I kept getting all these videos in my YouTube of resin crafts. Um, I also kept getting TikToks about them and I wanted to try it. I wanted to try to make some resin keychains. So I tried, emphasis on try. Um, they, they weren't very successful. But as a result, I have all of these keychain fobs. And I thought it might be fun to try and make my own keychain. I don't think I've ever done that before. And I thought if I'm gonna make a keychain, I want to do something that's easy, something that's got a simple shape, that's instantly recognizable, um, and something that I hold very near and dear to my heart. So I'm going to try and make a Kirby keychain from memory. No reference photos, but I, I, I like Kirby and I'm pretty familiar with him, so hopefully I don't need any, and hopefully it's perfect on my first attempt. So I have some scrap fabric strands that I bought at the craft store. I have this lovely pink kind of tie-dye pattern um, that's in this long strand, and then in a similar strand, I have this red kind of tie-dye pattern. So that's for Kirby's body and his little feet. Um, I don't have any black fabric, so I'm just gonna draw the eyes on. I couldn't find a black Sharpie, but I do have a black Expo marker, so hopefully um, that works just as well. It should, because I remember one time in elementary school doodling on my jeans with um, an Expo marker, and I assumed that it would wash off, and it didn't. And I have my little sewing kit here, um, complete with, I don't know if you can see it, but there's some pink fabric in there that we're gonna use for Kirby. Of course, Kirby is a circle, um, and I don't trust myself to freehand a circle. So what I have is this, let me take the, let me unwrap it from the rag. I have this bottle of multi-surface pledge and the base is a circle. So I will be tracing that for Kirby. The trick when tracing something, and I'm not gonna show this because I'd have to move the camera and I'm very lazy, and also I'm doing this on a trunk, or as my mom would call it, a footlocker. Um, so it's very scuffed up and dirty and I don't want you guys to judge me. All right, so we're gonna trace this circle. Here's a little life hack for crafting. Um, make your pattern that you're like tracing a little bigger than you want the actual design to be. Make your, make your design a little bigger than you want because when you sew it, you're gonna lose a little bit of real estate. 
Wow, can you see that? It's terrible. It's a terrible circle. I don't, I should be able to draw a circle. I should be able to trace a freaking pledge can, right? Like, I should be able to do this. There we go, can you see it? Can you see the little circle I've traced? Probably not, because I did it in pencil. Okay, where are my fabric scissors? Here we go. These are specifically for cutting fabric. Thanks, Grandma. Okay, where's my circle? Here she is. Okay, so, so I'm gonna cut out this circle, and then I'm gonna pin the circle further down on the fabric, um, and then cut the second circle so that they're like the same size. I'll do it up here so you guys can see my cutting. Oh, isn't cutting scissors like an ASMR thing? I said in a different video on this channel that I would never do ASMR because ASMR scares me and I meant it. I just don't like it. I don't know. And like, I get the, like, it does make my like neck tingle, um, but I don't care for it. Like, look at it. It looks like the world's saddest piece of baloney. Maybe I should just try and freehand the circle. Maybe that would be better. Should I try and freehand the circle? Um, I'll try freehanding it and see how that works. We're gonna cut to make it even so that I have a new little square. Wow, that's a terrible square, but I'll take it. Okay, so I'm gonna, okay, okay. <laughs> I'm gonna fold it into a little triangle so that we have a square in theory. And then I'm gonna cut it across this little triangle base. Okay, so now I have a square. And if I remember my elementary art class correctly, I probably shouldn't be gesturing with scissors. It's okay though, they're closed. I don't know if that makes it any better. Um, anyways, if I remember my elementary art school correctly, uh, you can turn a square into a circle by cutting the corners. So, just snip them off. And then you cut those corners. And there, look at that, look at that. Look at that, that's, that's, should I do like the beauty vloggers? That's much more circular and Kirby shaped than me trying to trace a pledge bottle. I'm going to put the circle on top of this little strip and I'm gonna pin it and I'm not gonna stab myself and there we go I have pinned my little circle on top of the scrap fabric so that I can cut it out and have two equally sized circles and there we go a circle attached to a circle oh this isn't gonna be a fat Kirby like this this is gonna be a little flat boy I don't know if you could tell that but my sewing skills are not good enough to be able to create something that's 3D. Um, my level of skill is really like 2D plus. And now let's get to sewing. Okay, here's the little pack of threads, which this is so nice. My The last sewing kit I bought, um, which I have at college, which I'm obviously not at, thanks COVID, um, only came with white and black thread. And this comes with a whole bunch. So like, that's really cool. Maybe I'll bring this back out to me back out to me, back out with me um, in a few weeks. Here's my little pack of needles that I got. Um, where's the opening to free them? Ooh, like three needles just fell out and I almost lost them. But I didn't. Let's put you boys back in the house. Except for you. You stay. Can you see the little needle? I need to... This is a beauty vlog now. All right, I've got my little pink spool of thread. Okay. Thread the needle. Now I always do it, my thread. Double strand, double, double? I don't know what other words I was trying to say. Double, and then I just knot it at the end. Um, which I think is like how you teach children to sew and I've never moved past that I learned how to sew using dental floss because it's really hard to break dental floss and it's really easy to thread it through big needles 
So I learned how to sew using red dental floss. Here we go. And I'm gonna put the needle here at the top through the edge. I'm gonna pull through, got caught. And the first thing I'm going to do is just make a little knot to secure the fabric. And now I just sit back and sew this circle, um, which I'm sure is very exciting to watch. I'm sure it's very exciting to watch me just sit here on the floor and sew a little circle. It's, I think this is fun. Um, this video isn't meant to be a tutorial. It's more of like a watch me try to do this craft, but you could use it as a tutorial, I suppose, if you wanted to make your own little Kirby keychain. I don't know. Um, it kind of myths me that things like crafts, like handcrafts, don't really, they're, they're not really considered like art, which like, not fair because a lot of work goes into crafting, you know? Um, I always thought that was really cool at the state fair uh, that I would go to growing up. I always liked going, which was the Kansas State Fair, by the way. Um, my favorite parts were always the butter sculpture and the rides, of course, and the giant barns where they kept all the animals and you could go and look at them but I also really like the crafting rooms where they'd have like all the big quilts on display and all the scarecrows that people had made. And in the room with the scarecrows, they also had all the produce awards um, and like these giant barrels of grain, like corn grain and wheat grain that you could just put your hand in. Apparently that's not a universal experience for state fairs, but I always thought it was fun. I have to be careful because uh, this is obviously gonna take a long time to sew and I'm worried that I will just keep talking while I'm sewing in order to, I'm trying to like hold it up so that it's in shot. Anyways, I'll keep talking while sewing in order to fill the silence of 2 a.m. in the morning. Uh, and then I'll have like 30 minutes of me just talking and not shutting up that I'll have to edit. <laughs> or worse, I just leave in. It's just an hour long video of me sewing a circle and just rambling. It's just my stream of conscious thought. Look, we've got like all this sewn, like a solid third of it. Isn't that fun? I'm doing this from memory, as I said, and I'm sitting here thinking about what I need to do next, what the next step is. Um, and I'm like, does Kirby have a mouth? And like, I know that he has a mouth, obviously his whole thing is that he like swallows his enemies, but like, when he's just standing, does he have a mouth? Guess I'll make that decision here in a minute. Anyways, we're at the end of our thread, so it's time to knot it off. And look, we're very, we're very close to being done with this. This whole video is just me being closer to the camera than I should be. But look, all of this is sewn. We just have this little bit here in the corner. And we're gonna have to leave it a little bit open, obviously, because we have to turn it inside out. I feel like I'm just gonna sew to like here, like just to this kind of little curve in the corner. Um, and then pop them inside out. Oh, I just realized I've done something really stupid. Kirby has little red cheeks. And if I were smart, I would have sewn the cheeks onto one side of this before I did this. So I guess what I will do instead is try to not sew Kirby shut in the center by attaching his little red cheeks. But we'll deal with that in a moment because first we have to finish the Kirby body. Uh, and now we're gonna knot off this little bit at the end. And with that, we have sewn our little Kirby body. All right, let's take these push pins out, put them back in the tomato or tomato, however you wanna call it. I don't like tomatoes. Um, I don't like them plain. I'm okay with them on sandwiches. Of course, I like tomato soup, who doesn't? I just don't like tomatoes plain. Like cherry tomatoes, can't eat them. I'm okay with tomatoes if they're in something. This is relevant because Kirby has his little Maxim tomato. Um, but brought it back. I brought it back to the theme. Oh, I definitely sewed this up too much. I got too ambitious. I was like, I can leave a little tiny hole in this Kirby. It'll work. And now I'm struggling. 
Now I'm struggling to turn the Kirby inside out. Come on. Should I do this by the camera? You can't really see what's going on. It's mostly just my hands and no one wants to see that. Okay, okay, I've gotten it mostly turned out. <laughs> this is what I have. He just needs to like fill out a little more. He needs to he needs to expand. It's like I've got a little finger puppet. Um, that finger's too fat. We're gonna use my pinky. Oh ho ho! And there we have it. <laughs> oh my god, that does not look like a circle. Oh. Oh, that's a little disappointing. But hey, he, he's endearing. He'll be fine. If you'll recall earlier, I mentioned that I'd forgotten to give Kirby his little face cheeks. Um, also, in hindsight, I probably should have drawn the eyes and mouth earlier. So, okay, here's what I'm going to do for the little face cheeks. I'm going to cut a little rectangle. So they're like that big. And now I'm going to cut the corners so that they're little ovals. And there we go. We've got Kirby's little face cheeks. Kirby cheeks. Can you see them? I can't turn it too far else it'll fall. Here's my little spool of red thread. It matches my shirt a bit. I wear a lot of red um, IRL. I don't know if that's reflected in my videos, but it's like my favorite color, so... Fun fact about me, red and purple are my favorite colors. All right, so the first thing I need to do is to commit to which part of the Kirby is, is which. If he were a perfect circle, it would not matter, but he is not a perfect circle, so it matters. Yeah, I'll make this side that I still have to sew be the bottom so I can have his little, he looks like a ditto. <laughs> he doesn't look like Kirby, he looks like ditto. Okay, well maybe it's Ditto pretending to be Kirby. I'm not gonna lie, I thought this this would be easier. So the cheek needs, maybe I should draw the eyes on first or put placement for the eyes. Um, let's just use these. Obviously there'll be ovals on the real thing. Um, I, I can feel it in my bones, I'm gonna stab myself. So like those are his little eyes. That's where the eyes will be. So the cheeks need to be below and to the side. And there we go. Got one cheek sewn on. All right, let's do this again. We've positioned and we're pulling through. And there we go. We have his cheeks on. That looks so bad. Oh my God. Oh, that's so rough. Oh, Kirby, I am so sorry. All right, there we go. We've got a little Kirby with some cheeks. That's fun. Okay, the idea of drawing Kirby's eyes and mouth just straight on to the face makes me really nervous. Um, so I think instead what I'm going to do is color in some fabric in the shape of the eyes and then cut that out and then sew that onto the face like I did the cheeks. I just have this circle, which was my first failed attempt at a Kirby body, which like I rejected it because it wasn't a good circle. Like it's any worse than the circles I ended up with. His eyes are just two little black ovals, right? What is Kirby's mouth? It's like just a little circle, right? Like when he's just chilling. Oh, <laughs> I, I drew everything close together so it'd be easier to cut out. And I've created like a little shy guy knockoff. Like that's, that's reading more shy guy than it is Kirby. Why is that? Is it cause it's because Kirby has white in his eye. It's not just a black oval. He's got the little accents. I have some white little scrap fabric that I found in the bottom of my big sewing kit. Okay, so now we're going to really draw Kirby's little eyes. Is that better? Are those better Kirby eyes? Which ones? They're both pretty bad. Maybe this is why I never did well in art classes. Okay, that's not too bad once you get it on the little face. Like... Like, that's not that bad. That's not that bad. Now I have to cut out his little mouth, which I am gonna go with the shy guy bowling ball one. There we go, like, that looks like Kirby. It looks like Kirby when he's in like the bouncy ball form. That's not that bad. Now we have to try and sew it down. Okay, 
obviously um I tried to color it in black but that didn't work so I don't think I should use black thread to sew it on I think it would stand out too much so I'm gonna use this gray thread I do have black thread I just when I put when I put them next to the little eyes the black is a lot more noticeable than the gray so okay I think I'm gonna do the same thing I did with the cheeks where I, I go in with the needle once I sew everything down and that's it so I think I'm gonna need a little bit more thread than I normally would all right we've got our thread I have the eye positioned I'm a little worried going all the way through the eye it'll look bad but you know what it's okay. It's what's on the inside that counts. So if if the eyes are a little cattywampus, that's okay. And there we go. We have an eye. <laughs> oh, that looks so bad with the thread just running straight through it. But hey, you know what? I don't have anything to add to that. Just, you know. Okay. Got it. Secured. I just have to do the second stitch. And there we go. Look, he's got eyes. Okay. And now we just have to attach the mouth. So we're doing this. I'm going to do the mouth in a horizontal single stitch. Oh, his mouth's a little cattywampus too, but that's okay. That's what this is. This isn't a Kirby keychain. It's a cattywampus Kirby keychain. Let's be real. But look. <laughs> Look at his little face. <laughs> Look at his little face. Aw, that kind of looks like him. That kind of looks like Kirby. Okay. And now I just got to tie off the thread. Guys, our little Kirby is almost halfway done. Look at him. Look at him. Look at his little face. Next steps. I gotta make the feet, attach them, and sew them shut. Or should I... I feel like maybe I should stuff him first. I feel like maybe first we should make the Kirby whole and then add the feet. We thinking that's the right call? I'm thinking that's the right call. Now, I do not own any um, stuffing for, you know, sewing projects. Uh, instead, I thought that I would have enough scrap fabric that I could just put it in the Kirby and he would be full. I do not have enough scrap fabric. So we're gonna do the next best thing, which is a plastic bag. A plastic bag Kirby. You see me? I'm trying. I think I accidentally undid a, through a, a few stitches. Um, just now trying to fill the Kirby. I don't want him to be super fat, like just fat enough that he's he got he's got a little a little padding. He looks like a ghost. He's a ghost Kirby. That's one of Kirby's power-ups, ghost. Or at least it was in Kirby Triple Deluxe. Um I don't know. I don't think it was in all Kirby games. I feel like that's something that they just added for Triple Deluxe. I could be wrong, though. As much as I love Kirby, I will say I'm not, like, totally, totally versed in the lore. There we go. There we go. There. He's oh, he looks so square now that he's full. A little square Kirby, but that's like the right level of stuffing that I wanted, like just enough to give him a little bit of shape. Um, that's pretty good. And now we begin the final moments of the Kirby body creation. Yeah, just as I thought, he came a little bit undone. I don't know if you can see it, like a little bit undone for me trying to fit the stuffing in. Okay. So I'm gonna fold the Kirby edges, fold the edges of the fabric, and then I'm gonna pin it. Now I'm gonna sew it. Now I'm gonna sew it. 
Oh, ladies and gents, we are getting a little curvy. I'm trying to not get too excited and mess up my stitches because like, you know, these crucial last few stitches are really going to secure the curvy. Boom. A curvy body. In theory. Look at him. We're so close. All we have to do is the feet and then we have to attach the keychain. Now, the feet I originally was going to make plush. I was going to make the feet, like the body, have a little bit of filling, but the size of the feet is the only thing that concerns me about my ability to do that. It might be better if he just has little floppy round feet. I could even make the feet be like double thickness, like twice as thick as the fabric. I might just do that. So I'm gonna fold it in half, and then I'm gonna fold it in half again, and then cut it in half again. So these are gonna be the feet. So I'm gonna cut it into a round shape, kind of. I want one side to be flat so that that's easier to attach to the body. There we go, we've got the Kirby feets. I think that's cute. That's about in the same style as the rest of him. So I kind of like the idea of him having little flat feet. I'll never be a dancer. Is that a thing with dancing? You're not supposed to have flat feet? I know that I have high arches and when I did dance as a kid, they were like, oh, it's, a, you know, like that's good. Like you want high arches, but also like, you know, I was pretty little. So that memory might be, um, wrong okay we have a sewn foot should i just go ahead and attach it now like and then i'll sew the other one and attach it like that yeah why not why not that's the emotion we're bringing into this project why not and just like that we have one foot attached Oh, every time I think it's not that bad and then I move him into frame and I can see him and I go, oh my God, what have I created? But he's cute. He's cute. On to the other foot. It's like that scene in Peter Pan where Wendy sews Peter's shadow back on. Um, I would show a clip, but I am afraid that Disney will come for me. Oh, his feet are so uneven, and I thought I took all the protective measures to make sure that they would be similarly sized. It has just occurred to me that maybe, not that I'm going to do anything about it, but maybe part of the reason this Kirby looks a little off is that I forgot to give him arms. And boom. There's our Kirby. Oh, Lord. Oh Lord, he could look worse, but he's not finished yet. We have to attach the keychain. I think I'm going to use white thread to attach the keychain. I want to secure the keychain tight so that Kirby doesn't fall off. However, frankly, between you and me, I'm not sure this Kirby's ever leaving the house on the bag. When I was in third grade, we had to do these projects um, on animals from Australia. Like every year, our school gave us a different biome, kind, kind of. And we had to like make a model of an animal that was usually drawn at random. Sometimes they'd let it, we'd, we'd draw like three and they'd let us pick which one we wanted or sometimes it was randomly assigned. Anyways, we were given an animal and we had to make a model of it and we had to do like a paper on it. In freshman year, it was the rainforest, and I did the leafcutter ant, and I made it out of styrofoam and clay. And then second grade was the ocean, and I had the blue whale, and I made him out of a water bottle that I paper mache And then third grade was the Australian outback, and I had the platypus, and I sewed a platypus that I still have to this day. I actually, yeah, he is on my dresser. Let me grab him. I made this little platypus with some parental supervision out of fabric and corduroy and I love him very much and I still have him. I mean, this is from like third grade. So the fact that I've held on to it for over a decade really tells you how much I love him. But like I made this and look how good he looks. He looks like a little platypus. 
he looks like a platypus. He looks good. So I think that I always use this, which to be fair, I'm sure I used some kind of outline and I had help from my parents. So like I always just assume that any handcraft I make is gonna go like the platypus and it doesn't. It never does. It's never as good as my little third grade Australian Outback Project platypus. But Kirby's, you know, special in his own way. Because he's a keychain. And speaking of keychains, it's time to attach it. Okay, I think the easiest way to do this is I'm going to place it. And then I'm going to use this pin to like lance it through his head so that it doesn't move. So he's going to be like this, but without the needle coming out of his head. I always really liked the creative one projects in school. Also, like once again, this keychain bit is something that I feel like I should have attached earlier, maybe. I don't know. We're just winging it. Um, but I always really liked the craft projects in school. Like they were a lot of work, but I always thought they were fun. Um, it makes me sad that that's not, you know, you don't really get to do those in college anymore. Like, you know, my professor's never going to ask me to do like a paper mache project. I'm studying journalism. It's not like they're going to be like, come in with a paper mache cast of William Randolph Hearst's head. Like, I would love it if they would ask me to, but I think that's a little unlikely. Yeah, but I really miss craft projects from school. I wish we had them. I think they're fun. I know that they're a lot of work, but they're also kind of, you know, like, because they're more fun projects, I think there's also a little bit of catharsis in them. You know, there are simple joys in construction paper. You know, this is going really well. I, I'm, like, diagonally, can you see? I'm, like, diagonally sewing the keychain. I don't think you can see that, but it's going pretty well. It might not look great, but it's effective. I know that it's like a rule in embroidery and in cross stitch, not a rule, but your goal is to make the back of your work as pretty as the front, which means that like you're supposed to do little stitches. You're not supposed to have these big like jumping gaps. Um, it's supposed to be, you know, very clean. You're not supposed to have knots in the thread. I don't think I achieved that. Here's what the back looks like. Can you see it? But anyways, time to reveal the final product. Come on, rotate. Da, 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 da. Oh my lord. Look at him. He's so cute. Um, I do not have my phone because I use my phone to record. So I can't Google a picture of Kirby to compare um, unless I go grab my laptop. So give me a second, I guess, and let me do that. Let me bring one more thing into this room that is now covered in craft supplies. Let's do that. That seems like a great idea. Oh Lord, it is 3.14 in the morning. Let's go to the internet and just... Uh, oh. Oh. Oh boy. Okay, things I got right. His feet are red and his body is pink. I got that right. Um, I did get the cheeks right, that he has cheeks. They're just horizontal, not vertical. They are not vertical. Um, also, I was right in thinking there was a little bit of white in his eyes, not that you can really see it because the marker bled, but I got that right. It's just that his eyes aren't black, they're blue. Um, and he, he's got a little pink mouth. It's not a little black circle. Also, he has arms, which I did mention earlier that he does not have arms in my version. And even though I realized that partway through, the fact that when I set out on this journey, I was like, he's just got feet and a body made me go, I shouldn't add any arms. Well, I certainly made an attempt. And at the end of the day, that is all that matters. I tried. Um, I had, I had fun. I had, I had a fun time with this. I thought it was fun. I'm always up for some arts and crafts. 
I'm very sorry to Nintendo and Mr. Kirby himself, because this was certainly an attempt, but he's still cute. I don't hate him. I think he could be better. Um, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry to my little keychain Kirby. He could have been better if I had used a reference photo, but that was part of the fun, was me trying to do it from memory. Like, how well do I remember this character that was central to my childhood? Countless hours spent playing Kirby games, Kirby Nightmare in Dreamland, Kirby Squeak Squad, Kirby's Epic Yarn. You know, all the Kirby games. And apparently, not a lasting enough impression for me to remember that he has arms. But yeah, I like him. I made him with my own two hands, you know? I made this. Look at him. Look at what I've made. The fruit of my labors. But yeah, he's cute. He's not Kirby, per se. But he's cute. And I had fun. So this is a success. <laughs> I think that this one about as well as any of the other crafts I've attempted on this channel. I think it went about as well as any of my other handheld, hands-on activities. I think I'm about square for the course. Is that the expression? I think that's it. And I think the stinger will be me stabbing myself. Son of a- That's what I get for not wearing a thimble. <laughs>